It's now 6 o'clock right here on Big Breakfast. Today FM, today is hit music. Hey, I'm Pauline. And I'm Alan. Tune in to The Breakfast Show on Today FM with Pauline and I every weekday morning. From 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. Right here on Today FM, today is hit music. Today FM, today is hit music. Good evening, this is FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. In this bulletin, police track down home invasion ring. Budget, budget forum hears from a wide cross-section of Fiji. And Lands Ministry wants expired cane farm releases, leases renewed. Now, police have made an arrest in what is believed to be an organized group involved in armed robberies and home invasions. The men have been linked to at least eight robberies, but police are hot on their tails. Chanel Sivan with this exclusive report. One of the four men responsible for a spate of robberies at various service stations and house break-ins was arrested last night. Our crime intelligence unit and our CID, our detectives are following them. Uh, I will not be able to give the names as yet now, but uh, the next avenue will be to just put the photos in the, through you people, the media. These four men are known to police? Uh, two of them are known. Uh, one of them is an SKP. The suspect was apprehended in Lotoka. Police believe the same group is behind a number of home invasions and aggravated robberies, predominantly in the greater Suva area, but also stretching to other major centers on Viti Levu. ACP Brown reveals three teams have been deployed and are working around the clock to catch the other three men. We are doing our best. We are putting all the vehicles we have on the road, especially the period uh, we assess, the peak period of, of these robberies and breaking. Brown confirms majority of their resources have been deployed towards the efforts to arrest the three men who for now could be classified as Fiji's most wanted men. He's confident more arrests will be made soon curbing home invasions and violent robberies, at least in the greater Suva area. Chanel Shivan, FBC News. Members of the private and public sector faith-based organizations, as well as the business community, met this morning in Suva for the 2016 Budget Forum. Alan Stoltz has more. Gentlemen, uh, we're the meet was officiated by the acting Prime Minister, Ayasaid Kayum, who highlighted a number of reasons why this forum was crucial ahead of the budget announcement in November. The whole idea, of course, is apart from getting consultations or hearing from you, getting your feedback, we also want to be able to get you to talk to each other and also to be able to hear from each other as to what are those interests and perhaps you may be able to have a better understanding. This gathering allows those in various sectors of the economy to brainstorm about their needs, what they lack, and to make these known to the government. Deputy Governor of the Reserve Bank of Fiji, Arif Ali, says while liquidity is high in the economy, growth has been steady over the years. The most interesting thing about this is that for the first time since the early 1970s, our economy is expected to grow for six consecutive years. And if you realize the growth over the next few years, then, you know, this is the first time you will emulate what had happened in the 1970s where we grew by seven, uh, eight consecutive years. The last time the Fijian economy saw growth like this was between 1971 and 1973 when we hit 4%. Right now, we've peaked at 5%. What's needed in 2016 is measures that will see this growth turn into tangible benefits for everyday Fijians. Ellen Stahls, FBC News. Police have taken in a pastor who is alleged to have impregnated a number of women in his congregation. Chief of Intelligence ACP Henry Brown says they are questioning the individual as investigation continues. The pastor was arrested in the last 24 hours. Police are also trying to ascertain whether any of the women were minors. The pastor remains in custody. Now, tax reforms are a key strategic feature for the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority. FERCA CEO Chitoko Tikolevu says over the last four years, the authority has piloted a self-assessment program with PAYE as the first text under the microscope. Maggie Boyle tells us more. 
Since 2011, the Fiji Revenue and Customs Authority has been working on improving tax compliance. Authority CEO Chitoko Tsikolevu says the trial self-assessment model being used on payers you earn tax is working. So a big drop from 27, uh, 2012, 28, 2013 uh, only 2 million and 2014 a big drop to 620,000 and only 20,000 20, so far in 2015. So it, again, it uh, drives the point that uh, the reform they are doing in terms of self-assessment. He says the onus is now on the authority to roll out other taxes to be assessed accordingly. We are going to continue this reform to other form of uh, entities, companies, so traders, partnership, trust and all that. Eh? So we're starting off with individuals. As well as other type of taxation, uh, other type of taxes, the VAT, needs to be self-assessed and other taxation as well, other tax types. The objective behind these reforms, according to Tiko Levu, is twofold. Voluntary compliance at 100% for all taxpayers. Maggie Boyle, FPC News. Two women have been hospitalised after an accident in Navutu, Singatoka this morning. Police spokesperson Atunaisa Sokomori says the accident occurred when their rental car collided with a Pacific Transport bus travelling towards Suva. Sukumuri says the women are alleged to have been drunk. The investigation continues. Coming up after the break, factoring in the transport sector in climate change mitigation. Welcome back to FPC News. The Lands Ministry is making special arrangements to help about 200 cane farmers renew their leases. Lands Minister Merisani Vunuwanga says this is necessary to further boost the industry. 200 state leases are spread over the Western and Northern Division. Most have expired because farmers haven't been up to date with rent. Minister Mary Wunyawanga says they are going out of their way to ensure that these tenants are able to continue farming and further boost sugar production. To assist these farmers in taking advantage of the current amnesty period for payment of interest on lease arrears. This will give them certainty on land tenure ahead of a new sugarcane planting season. Wunyawanga says the ministry has also eased restrictions on the number of agricultural leases a farmer can hold. The past restriction of one agricultural lease per applicant has now been removed and instead committed farmers can now expand their farming capacities beyond the one lease. Uniwanga highlighted that long-term leases now give farmers the confidence to invest more in their farms and contribute to our economy. The ministry's initiative will continue in 2016 with new reforms expected to be announced in the budget. Ali Kimbia, FBC News. Fighting non-communicable diseases will be the major focus of the Health Ministry 2016-2020 to plan. Health Minister Chone Osamate outlined the five-year plan in Parliament, promising strengthened health services. Ritika Pratap reports. The Health Ministry's five-year plan looks at preventative and curative health, as well as reviving the health services. In enacting this plan, our priority areas will be NCDs, because this now accounts for 40% of health care. This is an urgent issue and we will focus on a comprehensive approach to reduce the risk factor by working with people to alter their lifestyle. The other priority will be on maternal, infant and adolescent health and we will look to strengthen our antenatal care. Third priority will be on communicable diseases, environmental health and health emergency preparedness, response and resilience. Chone Osumate says the plan also includes the extension of primary health care. New laws have been introduced, while amendments are due to the Public Health Act. These laws have provided the Ministry with a direction and foundation for improving health services nationally. There will be a focus on making these legislations work more efficiently to consolidate and strengthen them over the coming year. 
Osamata says the ministry will work to understand the needs of the communities and begin projects tailored to those needs. Ritika Pratap, FBC News. The transport sector needs to be included in any decision on adopting clean energy and reducing carbon emissions. Climate change advisor for the Pacific Islands Development Forum, Dr. Mahendra Kumar, says Fiji has to set the agenda for the region. Prime Minister Vorengi Mbainimarama has announced that Fiji will be 90% dependent on renewable energy by 2030. The Pacific Island Development Forum believes this is an opportunity to set up an all-encompassing framework for climate change mitigation. Transportation sector is, 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 the, is the, one of the biggest sectors for, uh, as far as consumption of fossil fuels is concerned. It's also uh, the sector which is most challenging because there's no obvious uh, substitute for using fossil fuels in cars. Of course, there are electric vehicles, there are hybrid vehicles and, and, uh, which are coming online, but for that you need regulation, you need the infrastructure. PG is working on action plans that will form the basis of new universal climate change agreements to be adopted in December in Paris. Whatever we decide must be inclusive of all sectors of Fiji. Private sector, the business sector, the utilities and so on. Uh, we all need to be comfortable that look, Fiji has this target and these are some of the actions which are doable, this realistic. Dr. Kumar recommends a relook at the potential for biofuel through coconuts and not just for land-based transport. It's estimated that the transport sector is responsible for about 45% of Fiji's total carbon emissions. Edwin Nand, FBC News. Now, Nosori taxi operators are up in arms, claiming they're losing business with the arrangements at the new Nosori bus station and market. The facilities have been moved to the Nosori back road out of the main town centre while the taxi base remains at the old Nosori bus station. Speaking on behalf of 144 operators, taxi driver Mohammed Iqbal says they're not making any money. No business here, nothing we're getting here because we depend on uh, the bus and our taxi running through the bus. Our family depend on the bus business, so we run the taxi from here, bus. And there is no supermarket here and uh, no market here. We always depend on the bus. Now the Nasori Town Council is under a media blackout and will not be commenting on any matter. The Fiji Museum is undergoing major renovations with the intention of attracting more visitors. Sharin Latta reports the upgrading work started last month. Located in the heart of Suva's Botanical Gardens, the Fiji Museum will soon have a new look. To be changing the whole of the front of the, the museum, so the, the entrance as you know it will be changing. To um, uh, it's used to, It was closed off and so instead we'll be coming at, uh, from the main road and it will be all covered with disabled access. The renovation, which cost around $1 million, will see the construction of a new storage room and a coffee shop amongst other things. A lot of um, uh, artifacts in storage and we're going to bring them out for the public to see because uh, there's no point in them being in the storage so we're hoping to, to have a big revamp and uh, change the exhibitions. Following the completion of the renovation works, local artists will be able to display their works in exhibitions with a much bigger public gallery expected. I mean, once we've got, done all the changes and that, we'll be doing our, um, some more marketing, but uh, we've seen an increase in the number of cruise liners that come in from uh, coming in from the, the Suba Harbour and, um, and uh, even with the, the, um, the tourists coming in. Renovation works are expected to be completed in another eight weeks. Sharin Lata, FBC News. The Ministry for Trade has launched a selfie competition in partnership with the Fiji International Golf Competition. To enter, take a selfie with any Fijian-made, Fijian-grown or Fijian-sewn product and upload it to the Fijian-made by Fijian campaign Facebook page. Two winners will, get a, will have a guided tour of the Natandola Bay Championship golf course, entry into the Players Lounge gift pack of Fijian-made products and Fiji International merchandise. You get access to the Players Lounge and the locker room and a day at the VIP Lounge um, and it's an absolute money can't buy experience. So I hope you're going to invite as many people as you can to take part in this. We're very happy to launch this today 
And uh, as we are, as we're equally happy about having the, the golf on on the 15th mm -hmm. to the 18th. The competition will run for the next two weeks. And coming up in sports, Waisea Nea the level ruled out of Rugby World Cup. And Nandunga survives a scare against Malolo. जहां हम आपको और भी सुंदर बनाते हैं और जहां स्वाद की सौगात भी है नमस्कार मैं हूं पल्लवी सोमवार से शुक्रवार 9 से 12 तक रेडियो फिजी 2 देश की धड़कन पर घर संसार में शामिल रहिए मेरे साथ वेलकम टू एफपीसी स्पोर्ट्स the Vodafone Flying Fijians have resumed training ahead of the Rugby World Cup match against Wales to be played on Friday. Head coach John McKee says while there are many positives, they are also looking at fixing the weak spots. Indra Singh has more from Swansea in Wales. The reports and updates of the Rugby World Cup is proudly presented by Vodafone, Power to You and Airports Fiji Limited, creating new experiences, Fiji's gateway to the world. In association with FMF, the right choice. Total Exilium New Generation, the fuel that cleans your engine kilometre after kilometre. Sun Insurance, for Fijians, by Fijians. Supported by Fiji Airways, Deluxe, Island Chill, Comfort Home Furnishing, Rooster Chicken, Legal Aid, Land Transport Authority and Central Rentals. After two very good showings by the forwards at the World Cup, there are still areas which the team needs to improve on, and in particular, the discipline. The side has so far copped two yellow cards in as many matches. Things about the poor young lady who's lost her. Oh, look, look you know, we emphasise with the players all the time that, that you know, you, you must really play within, within the, in the, the laws of the game. McKee and the brigade have not discarded the fact that Fiji is still very much in contention of securing a place in the last eight and work is continuing towards that. When you, when you do all the, you look at all the possibilities there and, and, the, and there's still a, a possibility that, that uh, three teams could end up on two wins, being Australia, Wales and, and Fiji. So, so it's still, we're still in the hunt for, for the quarterfinals. It's been mainly positive reviews so far by the team from most quarters, but this side is not letting the Reeves get to them. We've done some very good things in the games so far, but we've also had periods of each game where, where we've been a bit below the, the high standard we set for ourselves. And, and you know, there's those little things in the game that we're working on, that, that we're tweaking. And It's a bigger turnaround this week, and McKee says this has given them more chance to work on preparations. Although the players have had good, good rest and recovery over the past two days, we've still had you know, some review meetings, and we had some quite important meetings this morning when we reviewed with the players the, the team performance against Australia and, and also the individual one-on-one. -on -one. So there's a, there's a lot of work going on, even even on the on the recovery. Now with the negatives being worked on to try and turn it to positives, it's all about the Wales match. After all, this is the third World Cup in a row. The teams are pulled together. Interesting, FBC Sports. As the Wales game approaches, the players know they're knocking on the door for the first win of the tournament. Indra Singh spoke to two players in Swansea about our chances. The Flying Fijians have now lost five successive Rugby World Cup matches against South Africa, Samoa and Wales in 2011 and against England and Australia this year. However, the players know they are close to ending this run. Yeah, um, I guess uh, the two games, are, uh, are they, they both finish now and it's uh, all in a memory. Uh, but... Uh, the coaches have uh, come up uh, with the things that we need to work on. It will be the third World Cup in succession that Fiji and Wales meet in pool play with both having one win each. I guess in uh, big test matches like uh, tier, tier 1 nations and uh, we have to play 100% and minimize uh, our mistake. It means whatever they have put in so far at this World Cup needs to be taken to another level to bring down the Welsh. Once they, they can sniff uh, 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 any chance to score points, they'll, they'll take it and uh, uh, hopefully we'll, we'll have to work on our mistakes and play the best to our ability and minimize uh, our mistakes. With a bigger turnaround for this game, the Fijians know the importance of the match. 
Yes, definitely. Uh, I think we need to um, work as hard as work as twice because uh, it will probably come down to points difference because we'll bank on other teams to top the other teams. So it's definitely 80 minutes rugby. Memories are still fresh of that 66 nil drubbing Fiji got from the Dragons in 2011. But then again, they can take inspiration from that famous 2007 win. Interesting, FBC Sports. Meanwhile, the team felt right at home earlier today in Wales as a local choir performed for them at the side's base camp. Interesting has more. It just felt like home for the national side as the local choir sang Fijian numbers in Swansea today. It's a great achievement for us and it, 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 it's something so special, you know, you don't get a chance to do this very often and, and these guys and, and the Fijians in general, they're such lovely welcoming people that it's nice for us to, to give them a warm welcome as well and a warm Welsh welcome. Expecting traditional Welsh songs, the team was surprised to hear the Fijian anthem and then this. Well, it was part of the competition we're in, and we had to sing a song from Fiji. So I went on, on YouTube and looked at Fijian songs, and, and this one popped up. And then I realised that Fiji Bati sing it, and then I heard that the, the, these guys sing it as well. So I thought, well, we've got to sing it to these guys. So how long did it take for the choir to perfect their tunes? It took us a while. We've been learning it for the last few weeks or so, and um, I think it, it's a, such a lovely piece of music. It, 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 when, when I wrote it, it got, got stuck into my head straight away, and the words have been going round and round my head for the last few weeks. So I think it's been the same with the choir, and they really enjoy it. The choir also sang Welsh songs whose meaning had a lot to do with love. Um, and the other one, when the other ones was um, Pan Vor Nos and Here. Uh, it's a love song, but you know, no matter how dark the night may be, um, you, can still, you can still see someone's face and put a smile on your face. So. This sure did bring smiles on the faces of the Fijians, something different from the focus of the World Cup. Oh yes, I think we were very impressed with the Fijian version uh, of the song that was sung by the, by the local choir here. Very impressive. And now with Fiji meeting Wales, who will these musicians be backing is the question. Oh, it's going to be really hard to choose now. I, re I really love Fiji. They're definitely my second country now. But I've still got to say Wales. Interesting. FBC Sports. Timothy Nangusa has been called to replace injured Waisea Nyadalevu in the Flying Fijian squad. Nyadalevu has not recovered from the injuries suffered in the match against the Wallabies and has been ruled out of the tournament. Nicola Matawalu also suffered injuries in that match but only has some bruises to his lower back and is expected to recover before the selection for the clash against Wales. Unfortunately, Weiss, um, most people probably saw that he, he suffered an injury in a tackle. First play of the game, really, on, on, uh, against Australia. You know, really unfortunate injury. He's, he's suffered a medial ligament knee injury, so he'll take no further part in the tournament, and, and Timothy Nagusa will join the squad. Now, meanwhile, in the lone match played today, Argentina thrashed Georgia 54-9 in a one-side affair. The Pumas led 49 at the break but scored 40 unanswered points in the second spell for a bonus point win. Georgia looked depleted in the second spell and could not match their performance they had against Tonga in the first outing. In tomorrow's matches, Italy plays Canada at 1.30 a.m., South Africa face Samoa at 3.45 a.m., while England take on Wales at 7 a.m. Now you can watch the entire tournament live right here on FBC TV. Nandragar scored a try in the last play of the match to retain the HFC Bank Fairbrother Trophy against Malolo at Lawanga Park in Singatoka last night. Malolo led 10-8 till the last moment, but a try to Tomasi Lotawa in the dying stages broke the B-Division champion's hearts for a 13-10 victory. Both teams scored two tries each in the match as Malolo led 5-3 at the break. Northland will next week challenge Nandragar for the coveted trial title. Cloudy conditions were experienced in Fiji today. A trough of low pressure with associated cloud and showers lies slow moving to the west of Tuvalu and extends southeastwards over Fiji and Tonga. Lambasa peaked at 32 degrees this afternoon, followed by Bao with 31 degrees. All other centres were in the high 20s. 
For tomorrow, expect more cloudy conditions and showers over the Fiji group. Now the further outlook is for occasional showers over most places. Southeast to northeast winds 15 knots, moderate seas. Recapping our headlines, police hot on the trails of a group of men believed to be behind a spate of home invasions and violent robberies. Budget Forum brings together stakeholders from a wide cross-section of Fiji. And Land Ministry works on renewing 200 cane farm leases to help improve the sugar industry. On to our poll segment. This week, we ask, is the level of police visibility on the road satisfactory? You can visit our FPC website to take part. You can also send us newsworthy pictures and videos on email citizens ice at fpc.com.fj or share it with us via our Facebook page FPC News. And if you're on Twitter, follow and tweet us your news tips at FPC News or simply hashtag FPC News. You've been watching FPC News. I'm Amrita Priyadarshni. Good night.